and hope when you hear about how God cares about you. Remember how God cares about you. And then you say, God, you're so wonderful. Hallelujah. Can you change the next sign for me? It's not moving. I don't know why. Okay. Zephaniah 317. Let's read together the second part. He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. Now many people think of God's love as some objective love. It's like God loves the crowd. God loves the world. Just the whole crowd of people. But these five words tell us God's love is full of feelings, full of passion. Here it says He will take great delight in you. How many people in the world really like you? Really like you not because of your gifts, but because of you. How many people really like you? Many people say, not too many. And then He will quiet you with His love. He will soothe your soul with His love. He will touch your soul with his love. One time I went to a hospital. I saw a woman carrying a baby. That was a children's hospital. Probably the baby was sick. And the mother was carrying the baby and the baby was asleep. And the mother looked at the baby from the head to the toe and then from the toe to the head. And when she was looking, she was smiling all the way. She was just smiling. I just stood there and watched. I did not have a, you know, in those days we did not have our cell phones. <laughs> if I had a cell phone, I would take a picture. It was so beautiful. It was so beautiful. God is looking at us with love. All of you. God is looking at you with love all the time. He wants you to be touched by His love and changed by His love. But many people live like orphans. Many Christians live like orphans. Many Christians say, I'm, I'm not worthy. I'm nobody. I'm no use. Has that thought came to your mind? I'm no use. Some Christians or some pastors say, Jesus, come back soon. Why? So I don't have to work anymore. <laughs> come back. I so I don't deserve and prepare my sermon every week. And work with these people who are difficult and don't obey God. <laughs> I used to have feelings like that too. But now I really enjoy serving God. That God really loves us and loves the people and God wants us to spread this news. Many people know God's love, but they don't know the depth of this love. They don't know how much we can experience His love and how we can be motivated by God's love. And He rejoices over you with singing. Does any of your friends, when they see you, they go, See you. <laughs> Not too many, right? But God will rejoice, especially when you love Him. You say, Jesus, I love you. Now the Bible says when we repent, when the sinner repents, the whole heaven will rejoice. It's not only applied to repentance. It applies when you love God. When you say, God, love, God, you are the best in my life. I love you. I like you. I appreciate you. I want you. I need you. God is happy. God is very happy. He will, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> he will say, I love this child. When you really love God. I, now this verse talks about God's love in a very compassionate way. A very strong, a filled with feelings. But many people's love for God is like, okay, I love God. I do something for God. It's just action. It's just the mind. Now some people say, how can I love God with feelings? Let me ask you, do you have feelings toward your family members? Are you happy to see them? You know, your family members are here because of God's love. God give love to your family members. And also God give people feelings. If everyone in the world is like this, where are you? How are you? Good morning. If everybody talks like that, how is life on earth? It's difficult, right? But God gives us feeling that we have feelings toward people, toward your cats or dogs or your house or your possession. And God 
His love, his, his love for us is full of feelings. But many people think of God, we don't think of, we don't have feelings. How do you develop strong feelings toward God? Whenever you eat, you say, God, you're so wonderful. You're the best cook. You prepare all this wonderful food for me. And when you look at the flowers and the birds, and you say, God, you give flowers to me. You give, you create all these wonderful things for me. And when God gives you joy and peace, you say, Lord, you're so wonderful that give me love and joy and peace. Whenever, that's why whenever I think of God, I really say, God is so wonderful. God is so good. God is so shows God's love. There is wood. Because of God's love, He created wood. We have clothing because God has created cotton, a different material. You have the plastic chair because God has created the rubber tree. Everything we have came from God. Everything, without exception. It's not just the church came from God. Everything in your house, everything you have, the stars and the sun and moon and the, everything, we have came from God. Yeah. And when you think of all the blessings, all these things, if you lack one, you'll be terrible, right? If you don't have water, or if the water is not like this, if the water is muddy, or like oil, you still have to drink it, right? But God is, uh, water is refreshing, right? All this came from the love of God. So I hope we learn to develop a desire to like God, to appreciate God. When you think of God, in Chinese we say it's like eating candy. Ooh, God is so good. <laughs> when I think of God, I always like Him. And that is why it's very easy for me to feel the Holy Spirit. It's very easy. When you really like God. Psalm 139 verse 5. You have enclosed me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. Lay your hand upon me means blessing me. God is in front of me and behind of me. And he's laying his hand upon me. This is a very wonderful verse. Some people say, is God really with me all the time? Let me ask you this. If this is you, when you were far away from God, when you have sinned, let me ask you, did you come to God first or did God come to you first? Did you come to God first or did God move in your heart first? It's God moving in your heart first, right? So even when we disobey God, God is with you to move you. So when you obey God, will God be with you? Yes. You know, God is with us all the time, even when we disobey Him. If when we disobey Him, He already loves us. So He loves us more when we have a close relationship with Him. So He's with us all the time. So when you pray, you don't have to say, God, where are you? Where are you? Wherever I pray, I pray like this. Oh God, thank you for being here. For being here. You're blessing me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And every time when I experience His peace and love, I say, Lord, that is from you. Because so many times, all the time, whenever I pray, I can experience the joy. I said, is this from my mind or is it from God? So sometimes I just pray, okay, don't think about joy. Just think about Jesus. Just Jesus. And then the joy will still come. So I realize God's nature is joy and love. And that is why when we come to Him, you experience His love and joy. That He is with us all the time. He doesn't, you don't have to line up to wait for Him. When you want to see the pastor, you have to line up sometimes. But when you want to see God, you don't have to line up. He's always in front of you and behind you and ministering to you and helping you. Now, I'm very sorry to say that many Africans have been taken to America or some other places to be slaves. It's very sad. When the master said to the slave, you have to do this, did the, put 
the slave say no? No way, they cannot say no. I saw in one movie about African slaves in America. And there was an old man, old white man, sitting on a chair. And then a few black kids were running around. And then he stopped one of the kids, lie down. And the kid has to stop and lie down. And then he pulled up his shirt and put his feet on top of the child's tummy to keep his feet warm. Now that is, compared to many other ways, they make the slaves serve them. This is, I mean, it's, it's not as terrible as some other ways. But still you say this is shameful. It's, it's a shame that they do something like this. But, you know, as slaves, do you think slaves would serve the master happily, willingly? No. They often they'll say, why should I be serving you and not be serving me? But let me ask you, is God our slave? He's not. But He's serving us more than the slaves. Put this in your memory. God serves us more than the slaves and also willingly and happily and with love. Can you ever find a slave like that? No way. Can you find a servant like that? No way. But God is serving us like that. Can we say, God, you're so wonderful. It should be me who serves you. Why are you serving me? But Jesus said to Peter, if I don't wash your feet, you have no share with me. Because everyone who follows Jesus must be served by God. God serves every single person. All the time. Is there anyone here who has not been served by Jesus? No. So we, can you say, Lord, why do you serve me like that? Why do you love me so much? Can I serve you with love? Can I serve you with love? I hope you all respond to God and say, Lord, you save my soul, you take me from hell, give me eternal life, and give me all the blessings, and give me the privilege to be your child, and also I can experience God all the time, and I can bless people. It's so wonderful. Isn't it wonderful? Isn't it wonderful? Isn't it wonderful? Isn't Jesus my Lord wonderful? Eyes have seen, ears have heard, is recorded in God's Word. Isn't Jesus my Lord wonderful? Can we all say, Jesus, you're wonderful. Jesus, Jesus you're so good. So I hope you put this in your memory. And then whenever you talk, when you talk about God, you'll be talking about God's love. You know, if you talk with me, you notice that I'll talk about God's love all the time. I'll talk about how good God is. When you, you know, if you stay with me or eat with me, you notice that I talk about God all the time. I like God so much. Whenever I see someone, I always talk about God. Because I'm motivated by God's love. And whenever I think of God, I'm happy. I'm very, very, very happy. And Psalm 90, 90 verse 14. Here it talks about God's love can satisfy our soul. Let's read together. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. All the days of our life that we will be glad when we are filled with the love of God. When we are satisfied. Are you satisfied with food now? Maybe some of you are. Huh? Maybe some of you are hungry, waiting to go home to eat. But when you eat, do you feel satisfied? But we can be satisfied with God's love. How many Christians are satisfied with God's love? How many Christians here are satisfied that you say, Wow, oh, God's love is so wonderful. That daily you're satisfied with God's love. Can you raise your hand? That daily you're satisfied with God's love. That's wonderful. That's good. I read a story someone said about a famous Christian leader. I don't know who that is, but the story goes like this. This man really admired a Christian leader, admired his relationship with God, and he went into his room and wanted to see how he read the Bible and pray to God. So he stays in the room without the man knowing it. And then the man read the Bible and pray, and at the end the man said, Oh, Father.
father. And this man once said, well, that's wonderful. He really had this relationship with God the Father. Now, when I read that, I said, that's good. That's good that he has this relationship, like a son to the Father. But I would say, why at the end? Why not at the beginning? Why not at the beginning and say, oh, Father, I'm here. I'm hallelujah. I love you. <laughs> yeah, you love me. That we can all come to God with confidence. We don't have to pray for a long time to believe in God's love. Some people, they have to read the Bible and pray for a long time before they can be, they can be immersed in God's love. But if we, every day, we think about God's love, we can be immersed in His love all the time. Now, if you live like that, your life will be different. Do you want to live like that? Then your soul will be satisfied with God's love all the days of your life. And your life will be different. And then whenever you talk, you can talk about the love of God. That it becomes very natural. Hallelujah. That we can be satisfied with God's love and be glad all our days and be happy all our days. You know, many people retire 70. But for me, I don't want to retire 70. If 70, I only have four and a half years. Too short, too short, too short. <laughs> 80, still too short. If God gives me 120 years like Moses, I'll take it. <laughs> Not to enjoy the things of this world. Actually, any time now, if I go to heaven, I'm very happy. But I want to bring the blessings of God to more people. And the more I have the close relationship with God, the more blessed, more teachings and more blessings He gave me. He has given me many teachings. That's why I want to go to the places to tell people. So that people are changed by God. Now, some people don't believe in God's love because they say, if God loves me, how come I have difficulties? They say, if God loves me, I would not be living in difficulties like this. Let me tell you, this is a confusion. They think that difficulties came from the lack of love of God. Difficulties came from the sin of people, the sin of the world. We all suffer because of sin. But God's love is sufficient in our difficult times. So when you have difficult times, don't say, God, do you still love me? But we say, even in difficult times, God is loving me. God is here. He wants to bless me. So that's very important. In difficult times, when you rely on God's love and say, God is loving me, and you have the relationship with God, that nothing can take you away from the love of God. Hallelujah. Now, how, where can we see God's love? Here, I give you five areas. I hope you write this down. And remember, just write down in yellow, the part in yellow. Let's read the parts in yellow. First, in nature. Two, in the Bible. Three, in Jesus' redemption. Four, in close relationship with God. Five, in daily help from God. We can see God's love in nature. You can see His love everywhere. You look at your body, it's full of God's love. How our eyes can see things so clearly. How our eyes can convey feelings. How our eyes can make our life so beautiful. We can see so many beautiful things around us. All these things, even when you drink water, it's soothing. You say, that is God's love. And number two, in the Bible. Now, if you start looking at the Bible verses and think about what the love of God behind the Bible verses. For instance, when Jesus walked to Zacchaeus and he said, Zacchaeus, come down. Tonight, today, I'll come to your home. That is love because Zacchaeus was a great sinner. He has cheated many people. He has got many, you know, much money from people. He was a tax collector, a dishonest tax collector. He just wanted to take a look at Jesus. He did not think of believing in Jesus. He just wanted to take a look at Jesus. But Jesus walked by and said, Zacchaeus, come down. That is great love. And when the woman with 12 years bleeding, he, she touched Jesus' clothing. And then Jesus turned around and said, who touched me? And she dared not say anything because she was afraid. And then later she said that she touched Jesus. And then Jesus said what? Daughter, 
take heart. Your faith has healed you. Jesus called her daughter. Now this woman might be older than Jesus, or not much younger than Jesus. But Jesus called her daughter. And Jesus called you daughter and son also. You are precious in Jesus' sight. When you read the Bible like that, how Jesus has compassion on the people, how Jesus called to Jerusalem, Jerusalem, I want to, no, I want to draw you back to me, but you are not willing. Even when Jerusalem rejected Jesus, Jesus did not reject Jerusalem. When we look at the Israel, the history of Israel, we saw how Israel rejected Jesus, but Jesus did not reject Israel. His love is everywhere. I hope when you read the Bible, every verse, you think about God's nature and God's love behind them. And that is another of my teaching, very important, that I show from many verses how to see God's love and His nature. And then, number three, Jesus' redemption. You know, Jesus enjoyed the presence of God. He's God Himself in heaven forever. He has enjoyed heaven, enjoyed God the Father. But now He came to the world and He was rejected by the people and punished by the people, crucified by the people. But the greatest pain was in separation from God the Father. And also being cursed by God the Father and bearing the sin of the whole world. For Jesus, that's unbearable for the holy Jesus to experience sin and re rejection of God the Father is unbelievable. That's why he has so much pain when he was in Gethsemane, when he prayed. So in Jesus' redemption, it's great love and also how Jesus draw us to him. And then in close relationship with God. When you spend time in a quiet way to worship God and love God, you experience his peace. And then every time you experience the peace, you say, wow, God is so wonderful. God is so wonderful. And then number five, experience God's help, love in daily help from God. Let me tell you, three times, I was almost hit by a car. And the third time, now one time is like this, the second and third time. The second time was very dangerous. I was driving on the freeway at high speed at night and I did not see some ice on the road, and then suddenly my car spin. It spin to the next lane and to the next lane. And then as soon as I stopped, a big truck went by. If I had spin a split second later, I would have been in heaven already. And I said, thank God, thank God. And at that time, the car was in front of me. I don't know, just 20 meters away. And I thought, there's no way to avoid that. And I said to Jesus, Jesus, I didn't know I could come to you so soon. And then all of a sudden, I don't know how the car find a way to turn away. I don't know how it happened. And I said, Lord Jesus, it's so wonderful. And one time I pulled a garage door because the electricity uh, switch doesn't work. And I find no way, I just pull the gap. The moment I pulled the gap, it went so fast and caught my finger. Three fingers had great pain for a few months. And I said, if the string had been a little stronger, I would not have these three fingers intact. And I thank God for these three fingers. Whenever I think of this, before I became a Christian, when I was young, about 10 years old, in the place where I lived, by the garbage can. At that time, the light was out, and I walked by there with slippers. And I stepped on something, it was a mouse. Because I heard the sound of mouse, and then I felt beaten. And I touched my toe, there was blood. But I was young, I didn't know anything. I didn't tell my parents. I just dried blood. I could have different kinds of sickness, but nothing happened. That was before I was saved. If I died there, I would have gone to hell. But God has a plan in my life and your life. Can you remember instances that God has saved you? That God has helped you? Now people don't remember those things. They just say, well, the difficulties in front are too difficult. And forget about all the blessings of God in the past. Can you put those in memory? 
Can you say, Lord, you have loved me so much. Let me ask you, if you have someone who loves you so much like my wife, <laughs> how much she loves me? If someone loves you like that, will you mistreat him or her? No, you won't. But God has loved me so much above anyone else in the world. But many people have disregarded God's love and take God's love as nothing. I feel sad for them. And many people misunderstood God and they say, God, you don't love me. God, you're not fair. Have you heard people say that? Actually, all this problem came from people, not from God. So I hope tonight you say, Lord, please forgive me. Because I have not appreciated your love. I have not lived in your love. I have not responded to your love. I live like a slave. I think of your relationship just like obeying God. Let me tell you, because of my appreciation of, of, appreciation of God's love, I'm motivated to die for Jesus. I'm motivated to do anything for Jesus. I'm motivated to go to places with the most smelly restroom. You know, there are places the restrooms are smelly and full of flies, full of worms. I still go there. I don't mind because of Jesus' love. His love is so good. Every day you can experience His love. 